and welcome to this three week update on my Awaze Escape Line 90 Nature Aquarium. It's doing really well, but there has been some minor issues which we'll talk about in some detail. And yeah, we'll just go through what's been going on since it's been planted. So the main thing is the plant health. Some of the cyperus in particular the ends of the leaves are starting to look kind of yellowy, like, like the leaves are dying off slowly. So I don't know if I should just remove the leaf completely from the rootstock, from the crown, or wait it out and see if the leaf actually does transition to its underwater form. So all, all the cypress has been grown hydroponically in greenhouses, so it's been grown in, in, in the air basically. And when you when you drown it, effectively, when you put it underwater, it has to go through this kind of transition from submerged to, sorry, immersed to submerged growth. During that process, you can uh, see die off, the plant can attract algae. So yeah, that is one of the risks. I've never actually succeeded with cypress in the long term. This is, this is me trying to succeed with a plant I don't normally succeed with. I am using a lot of CO2 moderate lighting at the moment with the Awaze premium LED and controller. Uh, there will be a complete video dedicated to that uh, at some point soon. Uh, excuse Tommy in the background. All the other plants seem to be doing okay. The Eleochorus montedefensis, again another plant that I've not really succeeded with in the long term, is dropping a couple of leaves but on the whole I think it's doing well and uh, there's new root growth on all of the species as far as I can tell. So overall, I'm, I'm relatively happy with the, with the plant health. The, the Ricardia is okay. There is a little bit of algae and diatoms building up on the surfaces, which is no surprise. Um, I have spent a considerable amount of time cleaning the wood, the rocks and the gravel, and also to help combat the diatoms, the soft brown algae, which is very common. It's normally about three weeks or so into Escape's life, which is where we are now. Um, I've added a load of ram's horn snails from my Oase Highline 400. There's probably about 50 in there. There's, just, there's a massive colony in there and I do thin them out regularly. And a lot of people don't like ram's horn snails, but I actually think they're a really good algae eater. And the, the population's relatively easy to control, unlike the bladder snails, which just, you know, that can get out of control quite quickly. Um, I think the Bramson snails are more attractive as well. They get larger and they tend to be more colourful, like particularly orange, orange colours look nice. So the Bramson snails are actually doing a really good job of grazing the surfaces for algae. And I've also added a small colony of cherry shrimp from my Oase Scape Line 60 low-tech uh, scape. Uh, so there's about what, 12 or so uh, cherry shrimp in there as well that will help. They don't really eat algae necessarily, but they can help prevent its build up by they're constantly grazing the surfaces for biofilm, which tends to be a prerequisite to algae. It's not been completely plain sailing. I, I was hopeful that of virtually zero algae because we've got a really mature filter on there, which was um, taken from the Highline 400 and the brand new filter put on there. It's no surprise, but I was yeah, a little bit disappointed to see the brown algae but it, it's one of those algae that will die back once the tank is mature, once the biology is established. My main concern though is some thread algae and I'm being really careful to remove that really diligence with an airline and actually siphoning each strand away and tra tracing it back to where it's attached to the plant or the decor and actually trying to remove the whole filament without breaking it. Because what can happen with some algae species, if you break it, the spores just get released and they'll go around the tank and then just reattach themselves elsewhere. So my theory is by just very carefully mechanically removing the algae, um, it will help to prevent it from spreading. So we'll, time will tell. I don't think I've, I did clear some up a couple of days ago and I don't think it's reappeared. So touch wood. It should be okay. Anubia's mini coin, I've just taken off tiny um, rhizomes again from the low-tech scaper line and sort of, yeah, almost randomly placed, that, placed it around the, the main hardscape uh, framework. I've also put some petite here, Anubia's petite. Uh, I'm not sure if that will stay there. The great thing about 
Anubius and this type of hardscape is you can it's just literally plug and play you can just take it off and, and if you want to move it elsewhere you can and then in a couple of weeks it will just reattach itself no problem fish wise we've got five platies in here now these are just a um, overspill from another aquarium and I, I do like I do actually really like platies I know they're a bit perceived as sort of common you know community beginner fish uh, they do breed prolifically um, but they do help with the aquarium. They keep the surface scum clear, so I don't need to use a surface skimmer. Uh, they do eat a little bit of algae as well. And I just think they add a nice bit of colour and movement. They're not a classic kind of nature aquarium fish, of course, but um, no, nothing against them. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do fish-wise in here in the long term. I am a fan of just keeping escape running for as long as I can these days. So, um, yeah it will be a careful decision if I do decide to add some more display fish. Let me know what you think in the comments. Always curious to know. The regular water changes I've been doing on average about two a week, two, three a week. Not been doing them every day because of the mature filter. And that's the Oase Biomaster 850 Thermo. And I've cleaned the pre-filter once because it was very mature from, from the Highline 400, so it didn't need a clean. No fancy filter media in there, just literally the sponges that come supplied with the Biomaster. Although you can, Awaze now do produce their own filter media, lots of different options. There's other kind of chemical medias as well, and other mechanical medias, so, and biological media. So you can check out uh, the Awaze uh, website if you like and, and check out their, their filter media choices if you want to stick with the Awaze brand. The only thing I have kind of modified is the the pre-filter sponges what i've done is mix the core sponges with the finer sponges and alternated them and this seems to actually give you the benefit of having finer mechanical filtration but without um, reduction of flow so much so it seems to work very well and i can get away with now with a, without cleaning the pre-filter every week i tend to do it every two or three weeks even in the the highly stocked uh, Highline 400 and, and Malawi Cichlid tank and the Highline 300. So just something to think about. If you've got an Oase Biomaster, maybe experiment with the different sizes of pre-filter to see, you know, see how it works for you. Uh, one thing I have done since the last video is actually adjusted the doors. So um, my colleague at Oase, uh, cheers Andy, <laughs> uh, noticed that the door uh, was a little bit skew. So very simple. To adjust uh, on the hinges there with the Phillips screwdriver and you can adjust it in, in every way so you can definitely make sure those doors are aligned up. I've actually also noticed that the aquarium is very very slightly um, off balance here so again with the Awaze cabinets you can use an allen key and you can adjust the feet uh, underneath the cabinet and so they you can make it level and that will be something I do this week probably. Yeah, so water changes, I've been adding a tiny little bit of the scope line fertilizer every day and then the mineral mix uh, twice a week, not using so much liquid fertilizer because we don't have much plant biomass right now. Uh, once it does become more established, I'll maybe ramp up the lighting a bit more and add a little bit more fertilizer. What I have kept consistent is the CO2. This is so, so important and a CO2 injected aquarium, if you do use it, you need to make sure it's optimised. So by optimisation, I mean a, a high enough quantity and uh, it has to be distributed around the aquarium efficiently. So here I have the, the Oase Biomaster 850 with an inline CO2 diffuser. So it's a, a, a powerful filter and the CO2 bubbles, micro bubbles, go through the inline diffuser and get fired out of the lily pipe there. And because of the nature of the design of the lily pipe and the hydrodynamics, the CO2 rich water gets blasted around the aquarium really well. And just looking at it now, it's almost like a mini snowstorm. You don't see it so much from a distance, but the, the entire water column is filled with tiny, tiny CO2 micro bubbles and they'll be feeding uh, those plants, hopefully as equally as possible. So what happens is the CO2 bubble will hit, hit the plant literally, and then the plant, uh, there are some um, suggestions that the plant actually almost thinks it's growing out of water because the CO2 gas is actually hitting the plant tissue and not 
and not necessarily the dissolved CO2. So this is uh, one of the theories why micro bubble, you know, inline diffusers or internal diffusers that create tiny micro bubbles is arguably a more efficient way of delivering your CO2. It's just not as attractive because you see the white, you know, these tiny white bubbles everywhere. The alternative is a reactor, which sits in line with the filter again, but it's a big kind of unit and the CO2 gets fully dissolved in that chamber before it goes into the aquarium. Never actually used one personally. Um, I am tempted to get one, especially for the Highland 400 as a black background, so you really do notice those white bubbles a bit more. Uh, let me know what you think. If you've got a CO2 reactor or if you use diffusers and reactors, let me know what you think the differences are and is it worth getting a reactor? Because I'm quite curious to know. Apart from that, everything is tickety-boo. The other plant species, Juncus repens, is growing well. Uh, the mosses aren't doing so well, but that's not a surprise because it is a new setup. I tend to only put a lot of moss into mature setups because they tend to get a little bit covered in algae. Coming days, I'll add some more cherry shrimp. I will just keep an eye on things, maybe do uh, another water change in a few days. It's great to see the small Eleocaris carpeting already in the right-hand corner. That's actually the area where the, the least CO2 will get to because it's coming out of the back right get circulated around from the front right to the front left, which is the last place it gets to. So all these bubbles will be kind of feeding the plants kind of on the way to the, to the hair grass, but it's growing well, so that is a really good sign. So that's it guys, a quick update on the Scaper Line 90. I did say there'll be a video coming on substrate, so that will be more than likely the next one. I just wanted to show you the kind of three week update thing, especially with regards to the algae and um, a little bit of a spiel on CO2 as well, which I hope you found useful. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. If you did enjoy it, do me a big one and hit the thumbs up. It does really help. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. All the best. Cheerio. Thank you.